One of these men played an important part in the scene you are about to see. Watch. What is your name, please? My name is Howard Nunn. What is your name, please? My name is Howard Nunn. What is your name, please? My name is Howard Nunn. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Howard Nunn and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. And here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much, and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Camel Cigarettes. Now may I introduce our panel. I almost have to introduce them to myself. <laughs> First, Mr. Tom Poston. Oh. Next, Miss Kitty Carlisle. Then my erstwhile stand-in, and thank him, thank him, thank him, Jim Fleming. And finally, Polly Burke. Welcome home. Thank you, dear. I don't know what to say to you all for your kind thoughts, your prayers, and your cards, and your phone calls, and your flowers that made the stay in the hospital awful short. I even did what you said. You know, my operation was postponed, and Polly and, and her husband already sent me flowers. So she said, what? Postpone? Put them in the ice box. You're not going to get any more. <laughs> so they put them in the refrigerator at the hospital, and the first day after my operation, they had them out again. <laughs> in other words, I thank you. And Jim, thank you so much. Great pleasure. Got to turn in the tables on you tonight, making you an interrogator instead. Well, it's good to see the chairman back in the chair. <laughs> ah, bless you. Thanks very much. Would you please open your envelopes now, panel, and take out your affidavit cards and follow along as I read. I, Chief Petty Officer Howard Nunn, serve aboard the Navy's first fleet ballistics missile submarine, the USS George Washington. Among my duties as leading fire control technician is the maintenance and operation of the Polaris missile fire control system. On July 20th, our ship launched the first ballistic missile ever fired from a submerged submarine. I am the man who pressed the button that fired it. Signed, Howard Nunn. <laughs> well, you heard these three gentlemen all claiming to be Howard Nunn, the man who pushed the button that fired the... Polaris Missile, and we start this first round of questioning tonight with Tom Poston. Tom? Thank you, bud. Let me see, uh, number two, you look like a Navy man. Maybe you could tell me, what were uh, the United States Marines called in World War I? Devil dogs. Devil dogs? Yes, Thank sir. you. Number three, can you tell me the uh, length of time for a countdown for uh, uh, firing a, the Polaris Missile from your submarine? Approximately eight hours. Eight hours for a countdown. How about that? Number one, please, could you tell me the nature of the fuel that the Polaris uh, missile uses? It's a solid fuel. What is the actual component of that fuel? That's classified material. Classi <laughs> we, that's classified material. So am I. <laughs> Number two, you knew the, the Devil Dogs. What was the slogan of your crew on this uh, uh, venture? Let's get up that milk bottle. <laughs> <laughs> With that in mind, Kitty. Number three, where are the halls of Montezuma? Well, that'd be uh, down in uh, Mexico. Number three, you also said that the countdown took eight hours. Uh, what do you count for eight hours? You're checking out all components in that missile. You don't say 394 million, 394 to make it come out eight hours worth. No, it started run it approximately eight hours. You what? You'll start it and it'll run approximately eight hours, 445 uh -huh. Number minutes. two, what do you fight the fire with on board the Polaris? We have extinguishers. What kind? Chemical. And they would put out any kind of an atomic fire? Yes, ma'am. Number one, where did the missile finally land? Down the Atlantic uh, range. Where? About 1,100 miles. Jim? Number one, where are the shores of Tripoli? <laughs> No, sir. <laughs> I'd like to ask you how the 
Polaris is projected out of the submarine? In other words, what sends it up to break the water? What force? Compressed air. Uh, number two, would you agree with that? Yes, sir. Uh, number three, can you name one other submarine that uh, is capable of launching a Polaris missile? The Patrick Henry. Uh, number one, uh, where did we conduct our tests primarily for the Polaris? On the, off the west coast or off the east coast? Off the east coast. Off the east coast. Number two, would you agree with that? Yes, sir. Uh, number three, I'm sorry. Polly. Um, number two, in the countdown, where did they get the clocks that go backwards? <laughs> I can't answer that, honestly. <laughs> I mean, are they made up specially? Yes, that they was are. fascinating. <laughs> Number three, uh, on this, uh, was this the first time that they had ever fired this, this uh, Polaris missile? From a submarine, yes. From a submarine. Right. Uh, and where exactly was the location? It was about 30 miles off of Cape Canaveral. Cape Canaveral. Yes. Wait. Uh, no. No. Wait. I don't have a question yet. Sorry. There's no time to wait. Where? Well, Jim, you see, you're making one mistake as an interrogator. When the bell rang, you'd start a question. You said, "Oh, I'm sorry," and you stopped. You don't do that. You I'm try to crowd it oh, in, yes. no matter what. I was so used to saying, "Oh, I'm sorry," I to the camera last week. Oh. You're on the other side of the fence now, you can That's be free. Right. Well, it's time to vote. So, without any consultation panel, will you kindly mark your ballot? And as you do so, you will vote for number one, number two. Or number three. Remember, the team of challengers will get $250 for every incorrect vote. Everybody voted? All right. Tom, for whom did you vote? Uh, can you see it? Number three. I voted for number three. One, I'm not sure that that fuel is classified, the nature of that fuel. And two, uh, that gentleman seemed to know so much about Marines, I suspect him of being a Marine. And uh, number three answered the questions very, very well, I thought. And if he's not the right one, they're all pretty smart. Kitty, which one do you think is the real one? I voted for number three. I like the way you look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's direct to the point. <laughs> Jim, what about your first vote on our show? My first vote, Bud, is for number one. He knew about the compressed air. Uh, I heard very little hot air. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like the man, you know. Okay, and Polly, your vote. I say, Polly, your vote. You <laughs> think all three. They're pretty smart, all right. <laughs> <laughs> no reasons, eh? Well, the audience. Uh, they gave the reason. <laughs> all right. They, they would have wanted it that way. They, I felt that there were waves were coming. I'm so to glad to see that nothing has changed since I left. <laughs> So there we have our vote that our minds made up. Let's check up now and see whether we're right or wrong as we discover which one of these gentlemen is the one who pushed the button that launched the Polaris missile. So will the real Howard Nunn please stand up? Thank you very much, sir. Well, it just goes to show you can't trust anybody in the audience. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you will again. Yeah. <laughs> Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? My name is Michael McLaughlin, and I'm an exterminator with the Guarantee Exterminating Company. <laughs> And number two, your real name and what you do. My name is Jack Cahill, and I'm a salesman for Ryan Gold, Extra Dry. <laughs> <laughs> and I've never been aboard a ship in my life. You've never been aboard a ship, never been a Marine? Oh. Well, you studied well. All right, let's check on the score. We find there were one, two incorrect votes at $250 each for a grand total of $500 from Camel and, of course, a carton of fine Camel cigarettes for each of you gentlemen. Thank you very much for being with us. Best of luck to you. Good night. I think we all agree that children are always full of surprises, but once in a while a parent can have some fun pulling a surprise on his kids. Now, just watch this. Now, panel, let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Seal Steele, and this is my dog, Dee Dee, who is wearing 
a very lovely lounging pajama trimmed in ranch mink. What is your name, please? My name is Theo Steele, and this is my dog, Cha-Cha. Cha-Cha is wearing a gold lamé cocktail coat trimmed with royal pastel mink. What is your name, please? My name is Theo Steele, and this is my dog, Victory. He's wearing a mustard color corduroy smoking jacket trimmed in black satin and lined with foulard silk. Now, panel, while we're all wishing we were that well-dressed, yeah. may I ask you to take out your affidavit cards and follow along with me? Uh, I, Seal Steel, own and operate the Dog House, a beauty salon for posh pooches. We provide a complete grooming service, including manicure and personality styling. We also provide a dog sitting service at $2 per hour. For dogs in need of a vacation, we operate a rest farm in the country. We feature a line of formal and casual clothing for the dog of distinction. While we cater mostly to poodles, all well-heeled dogs are welcome, even mutts. Signed, Seal Steel. <laughs> well, you heard these three ladies? with their three do lovely dogs, all claiming to be Seal Steel, poodle expert. So let's start the cross-examination this time with Polly Bergen. Polly? My poodle is going to be furious. <laughs> <laughs> furious. Matter of fact, I'm furious. I don't even have one of those things like that, do you? Well, yes, you do. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, number two. What's a knish? A, a knish is um, an outsized mini. I beg your pardon? An outsized miniature. Thank you. Number three, what is the height limit on a toy poodle? Ten inches. Uh, number one, what's the difference between a show clip or just describe a Dutch clip to me? Uh, a Dutch clip is when the um, dog is just clipped partway, not uh, completely. Number two, could you describe a Dutch clip a little more? Uh... Yes, uh, a royal Dutch clip. Well, cha, -cha has a royal Dutch clip. It has a track on the back. I see. And uh, what was the other one? Tom Poston was the other Tom one. Tom Poston. Tom Poston. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the poodle, Thank you. Meow! <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of a clip did I have? Uh, no, no. Tell me, uh, number three, which uh, dog among the dogs that you uh, work on or are familiar with, which dog has different feet and how, it, how are they different? I don't think I've ever noticed any difference. Num number two, do you know? No. Number one? I've never noticed mm -hmm. that. Did you know that poodles all have webbed feet? Number three? No. Number one, have you discovered that poodles have webbed feet? Yes. Kitty? Has your dog got webbed feet? Number one? Has got webbed feet? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, number two, are dogs neurotic? I mean, do they prefer certain kind of babysitters to other kind of babysitters? Very definitely. Do you have to match up the personality, number three, of your babysitter with the dog? Yes, yeah, definitely. Do you have complaints from the owners if the babysitter and the dog don't match in terms of personality? Oh, yes, oh, yes. What does the dog do to show his disapproval? Uh, he becomes spiteful, will tear up the house, or do, do just anything mean he can show, to show his displeasure. Will he, he cry? Off the dog sitter. <laughs> can, number one, can you describe a Staffordshire Bull Terrier? A Staffordshire Bull Terrier? Yes. I don't believe I'm familiar with that breed. Can you, number two? I'm not familiar with any breed but poodles. Uh -huh. I can't even say it. Jim? <laughs> uh, number one, uh, how, how do you spot a well-heeled dog? In show? Uh, no, you say that you service uh, mostly poodles and all well-heeled dogs are welcome. I mean, how do you spot one? <laughs> uh, thank you. I don't I remember. <laughs> that tells me all right. Uh, do you do any welfare work, number two? Uh, now, define welfare work with respect to dogs. Uh, what is a casual garment for a poodle, number three? It would be a garment worn casually. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we are. We've broken it down to web feet and well heels, and let's see what we do now by marking our ballots, if you will, please, without consultation. And in doing so, vote as you did before for number one, number two, or number three. I haven't really. Voted. Everybody voted? Not, well, I guess oh, I, I would. Uh, oh. 
terrible because... It is quite, quite difficult. I... Uh, mark ballot so I can call for the first right. one. Couldn't I Holly? wait until after I no, hear what's No, I'm sorry. <laughs> you have to mark now. I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. What was that again? Uh, <laughs> Holly, mark the ballot. Oh, all right. All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number three. That's who I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it there now. Uh, we didn't get too many really critically important answers, but I liked her uh, style and delivery, and uh, I think maybe it was she. Kitty? I think it's number one, but I voted for number three because she was the only one that said that her dog had webbed feet, and I believe, Tom, that those dogs have webbed feet. They don't have number three shaking her head at me. She didn't, didn't say anything. anything. No, well, number three's dog seemed to like her the best, and I figured she <laughs> had the most for poodles. Okay. Jim, you're... But, but I voted for number two. Uh, but I like the number three poodle the best. <laughs> and Polly, what did you finally mark down? <laughs> you know, that one? Well, no, I, I'll tell you, it was tough because I, uh, number one couldn't describe... Uh, descri How's that again? Couldn't tell me what a Dutch clip was. Staffordgeable. And number two did, but number one, I just had a... I'm wrong, I... <laughs> All right, let's see if you are, because all the votes are in. We'll discover which one of these three ladies and lovely poodles are the real ones. The ladies, of course, being the poodle expert and uh, the expert on both webbed feet and well-heeled dogs. So will the real seal steel please stand up? Thank you very much, Ms. Steele. Now, number uh, one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? My name is Marianne O'Malley, and I have a jazz combo. <laughs> I'm a professional drummer. I'm sure you don't have to have webbed feet to do that, but right. I'd like to ask you one question. Uh, is that your dog? No. This is uh, Jane Morgan's dog. Oh. Now, uh, number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do? Yes, my name is Judy Thornton. I'm a shoe model here in New York. <laughs> <laughs> and is that your dog? No, it's Catherine Murray. <laughs> well, we thank you, and uh, let's double-check on scores here now and see what we have. We That's had two correct yeah. and two wrong. That is your dog. That's the one I don't want to find. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Does he two are? All the time. All the time. <laughs> he couldn't. He couldn't hold a cigarette in his webbed feet. You know that. <laughs> so we have two incorrect votes at $250 each for a grand total this time of $500 again from Camel Cigarettes and a carton of Camels for each of you. I'm sure the dogs don't smoke. <laughs> Good night and thank you for being with us. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Good luck. <laughs> Tell me something. When you're in a restaurant, do you kind of like to uh, listen to the conversation that's going on at the next table? Well, come on. Let's do a little eavesdropping. And here we go, panel, all ready to meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is William Ramoth. What is your name, please? My name is William Ramoth. What is your name, please? My name is William Ramoth. Again, panel, take your affidavit cards and follow along with me, please. I, William Ramos, am a part-time motion picture actor. I doubled for Paul Newman in the film Somebody Up There Likes Me, and I've also appeared in The Face in the Crowd, Murder Incorporated, and I have a three-minute scene in the new motion picture Pretty Boy Floyd. I was both stand-in and double for Marlon Brando in On the Waterfront, and Brando's makeup for this picture was based on my facial characteristics. I also have a regular job. For the past 11 years, I have been a member of the police force in Clifton, New Jersey. Signed, William Raymond. <laughs> Three stalwart gentlemen this time. I think you'll agree, panel, all claiming to be William Raymond, policeman and movie double. And we'll start this round with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty. Thank you, bud. Uh, number one, uh, who directed On the Waterfront? Uh, Kazan, Eli Kazan. Number two, who produced that picture? Sam Spiegel. Number three, can you tell me uh, Kazan's uh, wife's name? No, I can't. Can you, number one? Uh, no. Number two? No, I can't. Um, number one, who directed uh, Face in the Crowd? Um, Bob Weiss. 
Number two, who directed Face in the Crowd? You like a Zen. Uh, number three, you live in Clifton, New Jersey. That's I right. live in New Jersey in the summertime, too. Are you near us? <laughs> I don't know where you are. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Fleming, please. Um, I didn't tell him where I live. <laughs> tell him that. No. Number three, uh, who was the cameraman in the movie On the Waterfront? No, I wouldn't know that. Number two, do you know? I think it was Boris Kaufman. Number one? Uh, no, I don't know that. Uh, what other motion pictures were shot in uh, Clifton, New Jersey, number two? None that I know of. Uh, it, nothing's going on there on a regular basis, is that it? No. Uh, what, uh, where was the On the Waterfront uh, shot for the most part? Uh, down on the Hoboken docks. Uh, number... Uh, Holly? Uh, number two, uh, what is uh, Mr. Gazan's nickname? Gadge. Number three, in A Face in the Crowd, who played the part of the young... Um, Baton twirler. The baton twirler? Uh, some blonde, that's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> number two, could you tell me who played? No, I don't the, know. Number one, do you know? No, I can't. Uh, number one, in Somebody Up There Likes Me, did you do the fight, the, all the fight scenes for Paul? No, I just had a small scene in the jail scene. Oh, I see. Uh, number three, in the doubling for Brando, did you do the fight scenes? No, I didn't. Uh, Tom? Uh, number three, what do his friends call the lead in Pretty Boy Floyd? Excuse me, I didn't get that. You know the lead in Pretty Boy Floyd? Yeah. What do his friends call him? Have you been around on the lot when he was talking to old pal? Yeah, no, I don't recall what they call him. What do you call him? I just call him John. Thank you. Uh, tell me, number three, how do you designate an all points? What is an all points? I don't know. Number three, number two, do you know what an all points is? No, I don't. Number one? No. It's a police term, number three. All <laughs> points. I never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, time again to vote. All points bulletins are out now on this one, so mark your bulletins, if you will, please. And vote for number one, number two, or number three. I'm not voted yet. <laughs> Mark them quickly, panel, well, if you will, on. please. I, I, can't, I, I just Number can't. One and four have you voted. Polly, you I marked voted. your ballot? I okay. Vote. Tom, for who did you vote? I voted for number three. I, I, I hesitated to vote, I guess, for any of them. Number two knew an awful lot of, uh, of the answers to the questions, but I was unable to figure him uh, doubling for Paul Newman. Uh, on size, but uh, I suppose it's possible. I still voted for number three because you seem most likely from that standpoint. Kitty? Yeah, I think you're right suddenly. I voted for number two, but uh, number one didn't know who directed The Face in the Crowd. I think it was Kazan. Yes. And, uh, but number three didn't know uh, who the baton twirler was, Lee Remick, but number two didn't either. So I voted for number two. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Fleming, what kind of a confused reasoning can you add well, to this? Well, uh, I voted for number two, and I voted for him principally because he knew the name of the cameraman, Boris Kaufman, and also because I've got to be right once tonight. That's right. <laughs> Just once. <laughs> Polly, which one do you think is there? Well, I, I was with the others. It's two or three, and I went for number three because it said that Marlon Brando's makeup uh, in Waterfront was based on his face, and he looked familiar. <laughs> 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 All right, let's see how we make out in our particular moment of truth now as we discover which one of these three gentlemen is the real double and stand-in uh, and policeman in his spare time or main time, it should be. Will the real William Raymond please stand up? Thank you, sir, and I'd like to congratulate you for the fine work you're doing in uh, juvenile delinquency over there in Clifton. Uh, thank you, bud. Splendid record that you've done there. Number one, would you tell us who you really are and what you really do, please? I'm Robert Kramer. I'm New York representative from Foot and Davies in Atlanta, Georgia. We're color printers and lithographers. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and number two, your real name and what you do, please? My name is Billy Graham, and I uh, work for National Distillers. You Billy Graham, the
right. <laughs> yes, I know Thomas Tom notices this, that Billy Graham was an outstanding welterweight contender. In fact, he twice, I believe, fought Kid Gavilan for the title. <laughs> oh. <Wasn't it>? Twice. <laughs> What'd you say, Tom? I should have had it. Well, you I won't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know more. Well, in checking up tonight yeah, on the decision you reached, you did get two incorrect, <laughs> as the others have tonight. At $250 each, a grand total, therefore, of $500 from Camels and a carton of Camel cigarettes for each of you. Don't break training. <laughs> but if you do, break it with a Camel cigarette. Thanks for being with us. Good night. God bless you. something short and sweet from our all in it sponsor, Helene Curtis. Well, that's all we have time for. It's good to be back with you. Good night, panel. Good night, everybody. Good, night, good, good to have here. you back. Thank you. Bud Collier saying good night for Camel Cigarettes and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody.